Hello everyone, Crash here with Zartea Motorsports. Today we're gonna to be talking about connecting your Oculus Quest 2 to your PC. Here we go. Welcome to RTA Motorsports. All right, everyone, happy New Year's. This is gonna be my first video of 2022, and thank you so much for joining in. I hope this is gonna be a big year for RTA Motorsports. If you're new to this channel, I have done a ton of VR content over the years. Uh, definitely check out my channel for a lot of reviews. I've done reviews of the Oculus Quest 2, also a review in a sim racer perspective. So if you're looking at it in terms of sim racing or just simulators in general, that video should be useful to you, as well as many other VR headsets if you wanna get into PC VR specifically. But today, this is gonna be a very quick video on just how to connect your headset to the PC and the different ways to do it as of right now, according to me. If you have never actually used VR before on your PC, there's gonna be a few things you're gonna to wanna to make sure first. Actually, one thing. Can your PC actually run VR? And one of the most uh, useful tools that I utilize, and I have utilized in the past, is the Steam VR performance tool. So let's jump into there and I'll show you kinda of how it works. It's very simple. Okay, so you see we have Steam up right now and ready to go. If you don't already have the Steam software installed on your computer, you're gonna wanna do so because it's gonna be one of the methods we're actually gonna utilize to actually get on PC VR. And I'll show you a little bit more of that in just a little bit. But if you don't have Steam installed, go to steampowered.com. Uh, this is where we basically get a lot of our Steam well, a lot of our PC VR titles, not the only place to do it, but it's one of the main places to do it. One of the two that I utilize. And again, I'll go into that in just a little bit. But once you have it installed, uh, what you're going to want to do is in the search bar here, you're going to type in, uh, was it Steam VR? Can't type. Performance test. There we go. Boom. The top one. You can see it's free. It's just a test. And then what you're gonna wanna do, I already have this installed. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our library. I'm gonna go to home. I'm just gonna type in here and go to VR. Now on the bottom under tools is where you're gonna wanna find this sort of stuff. So you can see we have Steam VR, we have Steam VR performance test. Uh, the performance test, this is gonna let us know whether our PC is actually able and capable of running VR. Okay, so you can see on the results here that we are VR ready. We got that green arrow just pinged all the way at the top, even though we also were recording off the system too, but I wasn't really expecting this result to be any different than what it is. Uh, it tells you what your GPU and what your CPU is. And interestingly enough, it says my operating system is Windows 10, but I'm actually running Windows 11, so I'm not really sure what that is all about. Um, but I also have seen, I have a uh, laptop that I'm actually gonna be doing some videos on in the near future. It's a gaming laptop, uh, but it's that one there runs in the capable range. So capable, if you're within the yellow, doesn't mean you can't actually run Steam VR. It may just mean, depending on the title, you may have to lower some of the graphical settings, but it also may also suggest, which is pretty neat, uh, what you might wanna do to do some upgrades, whether it's um, boosting your RAM a little bit, things like that, or maybe installing a new GPU, which I can't do on my laptop, but uh, it does give you some uh, things and some pointers to look at if you need to actually upgrade your system. But as far as our system here, we are good to go. Okay, so now while you already have the Steam software up and running, I recommend that you download and install Steam VR. Now this VR client here is one that's going to allow you to access any of the titles that you have already purchased or that you may purchase in the future from Steam themselves. There's tons of titles, uh, VR titles that are extremely popular, only accessible through Steam VR, not necessarily through Oculus's store page. So this is going to be a whole nother store you have access to VR content through. So you might as well install it. It is free to install and it's free to use. Um, and also if you're accessing PC VR through the Oculus software, which we'll get into in just a moment, you could then launch Steam VR on top of the Oculus. So now let's go into the next piece of software you're gonna to wanna to make sure you install. 
So the next piece of software is one that I recommend you download. It's gonna be the first of two methods that I'm gonna go into actually how to connect your Quest 2 to your PC. And that is basically through Oculus. So Oculus software is probably one of the more easier methods to do it. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to that URL at the top there, oculus.com forward slash setup forward slash. And then it's gonna bring you right to this page here. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is scroll down, you're gonna see the Quest 2 that you have on your head, and you're gonna to wanna to download the Quest 2 PC app. Okay, so we have the Oculus software downloaded and installed. Just a quick run through. You can see we do have a store that is independent in Oculus. Uh, a lot of the titles now coexist on both libraries. Before there was a lot of separation between Steam and Oculus. Now a lot of titles are on both, but I still recommend you download both clients because there is some key titles that are only available on one or the other. Uh, but if you go to library, you can see I can even launch Steam VR from within my Oculus library. It's pretty neat that I'm allowed to do that. They're not completely separate. Uh, but if you go to devices, this is where we're gonna wanna be right now. You can see my Oculus Quest 2. It is. It says it's connected, but it's not fully connected because my headset is uh, in standby mode right now. Uh, what I prefer to do is I prefer wireless connections. And I'm going to show you how to do that within the headset through AirLink, they call it, through the Oculus software. Uh, it is not mandatory to do it that way. You can utilize a USB-C cable, either USB-C to USB-C or a USB-A to USB-C utilizing USB 3.0 port on your PC. You can do that if your router is being utilized quite a bit or if your router is not up to the task of the throughput of data that needs to happen between your headset, the router, and the PC. Uh, but if you are gonna do wireless connection, which I highly recommend, some things you're gonna wanna make sure of first. Uh, first thing is you'll get the best performance if the PC is connected to the router through ethernet. Now, it is not mandatory. I have a gaming laptop that I just recently got. My laptop sometimes is downstairs with me in the living room of the house, and I am streaming VR to my headset via the laptop through the router, which is upstairs over here. <laughs> so uh, it does stutter at times. There is sometimes lagging. There is sometimes freezing. They recommend both with Oculus software and the other software I'll show you in a little bit, that the PC is tethered to the router with the ethernet cable to have the best performance possible and eliminate a lot of latency issues that may happen like that. The next thing you're gonna wanna make sure is that your router is actually able to handle that. So make sure you at least have a five gigahertz router. I've, I know they recommend a lot of new features and my router, my Nighthawk router is actually quite a beast um, but I noticed when I had a lower end, older five gigahertz router, it worked just fine. Just make sure you don't have a lot of things going through your router at that point in time. Make sure you are not currently streaming movies on Netflix in 4K while you're trying to use that same band. My current router has multiple five gigahertz bands. I have almost a gigabit ethernet here. It's not quite gigabit, but it's pretty close to it. And I have one of my five gigahertz bands uh, nothing other to that five gigahertz band at all. I mainly use that for my VR headset. And I notice I actually have very good performance in doing that. I'm not saying it's necessary, but for my use case, it works. So let me show you how to connect your Oculus Quest 2 to your Oculus software wirelessly. Okay, so from within the headset, very, very simple now to connect it to the Oculus software. So what you're gonna wanna do is down here under quick settings, you're gonna see this here. This is the Oculus Air Link. You're gonna to wanna to click that. Here I could see my desktop. I'm gonna hit launch. It's gonna say connected. There we go. Okay, and you can see it loaded me up in the Oculus client. Now this is totally different than what it looks like within the Oculus Quest 2 user interface. You can see I'm in a different home. There's loading targets over there, and the UI is different here. Uh, one quick tip of what you're gonna wanna look out for when you're in the Oculus software inside the headset. If you're experiencing blurry visuals, you're gonna wanna go all the way to the left here, go to Oculus Air Link, and you're going to want to adjust this dynamic slider. Mine was set to one, up to 140 megabits per second. 
I just boosted it to 200. I through updates, sometimes that gets reset. Um, but if you're experiencing a lot of lag or a lot of stuttering, you may want to lower that bit rate down. Or if you know your best visual to performance ratio is a certain megabit per second, you have tested it, you might want to go into fixed and just set that bit rate to whatever you want and it will just hold it and it will stream it and then you may have better performance that way. You could also quit AirLink through here. Okay, so we have the headset still connected. What we're gonna wanna jump into now is the Oculus software. And we're just gonna do a quick little dive into the software, maybe help a few people out that answered a lot of the common questions I see on some of my older VR videos. So from within here, we could see our Quest 2 battery percentage left, uh, left and right touch controller battery percentage. And you could see here, it says connected and active but no headset audio. That red X is no big deal. If I go to my desktop audio settings, I could set it to my Oculus Quest or Quest 2, I should say, and then that will turn green. I'll have audio coming out the headset. No big deal. Not really gonna worry about it for the purposes of this video. So what we're gonna do is click on graphics preferences. This is a very important tab uh, along with the bitrate slider to really fine tune your experience. A lot of questions I get is, how come it looks so blurry? How can I increase the frame rate? How can I do this, that, and the other thing? So if you are experiencing very poor frame rate in your title, it may be because of the render resolution is too high for your PC to handle. Uh, they do have presets automatically set up here and you can see the automatic recommended uh, render resolution at 1.0. And you can see that resolution there changes depending on what type of refresh rate we set the panels to. So you could do 72, which was the initial setting that we had when we first got Oculus Air Link. Uh, but now they have unlocked 80, 90, 120. Now, a lot of headsets that I own run at 90, so I leave it at 90 because that's kind of what I'm used to. I did notice if I drop down to 72, uh, specifically in sim racing at fast tracks with a lot of tight turns. I do feel that refresh rate disparity only slightly, uh, but I do also notice that if you are running a frame rate that is extremely consistent and your PC could hit it every time, sometimes that's much more of a pleasurable, immersive experience than having stuttering as your PC is trying to hit a certain frame rate and it can't quite hit it. Uh, you're also gonna notice that the automatic re recommended render resolution jumps up quite a bit when you go to 72 hertz versus 120 hertz, and that's 3200 by 1632. They do that on purpose because when you are jumping up your refresh rate of the panels, you're also now counting on that your PC can run at at least 120 hertz at that specific title. Now, a lot of times, a lot of gaming PCs that could handle VR, when you're playing a normal VR title, that shouldn't be too much of an issue to maybe throw it at 90 or 120 hertz, depending on your PC. If you're running a title like Half-Life Alex, or if you're running a title like Assetto Corsa Competizione, which is a very popular sim racing title right now, you're going to notice you're gonna have to drop your graphical settings down to really hit those higher frame rates depending on your PC. One thing you may want to then start doing is maybe dropping your refresh rate down of the panels. You might find that's a much more pleasurable experience and then you're able to actually boost the render resolution up, get a lot more clarity out of it. You may actually think that it's a completely better experience than what you were experiencing trying to hit the 120 when your PC couldn't hit it in the first place. So definitely fine tweak your experiences here. I leave it for me at 90 Hertz and I find that I don't really have any issues. Again, you can throw it at 120, take the automatic recommended setting off and then put whatever render resolution you want and see if for that specific title, your PC could hit it. May actually hit it just fine. But I find if I leave it at 90 with the Oculus software, it does a good job and I get a good balance between performance and clarity. You connect your PC to your Oculus Quest 2 via USB-C, and you follow the same methods that we just did, connecting to AirLink through Oculus with the USB-C cable connected. And from there on, you won't really have to worry about 
lag or anything like that. Just make sure you're using a high quality USB-C cable. Doesn't have to be necessarily the Oculus Link cable, but try to make sure that you're looking, especially if you're buying in Amazon, that you're looking in the uh, reviews and try to search and see if other people are using that specific cable for this specific usage. All right, so the next method we're gonna talk about for connecting your Oculus Quest 2 to your PC is gonna be one that I mostly use. Now, I'm not affiliated with this company at all, and this is gonna be the non-free version of connecting your, your headset to your PC. The Oculus Quest 2 uh, can utilize the Oculus software for free. It's part of their whole ecosystem, and you could get PC VR just fine. You could tweak the software a little bit get everything going and it looks great. You can enjoy it now for free. But this version here, the reason why I use virtual desktop is because I seem to notice that with my setup, I get better performance, uh, better visual clarity on in more instances. And it almost seems to be like it, it. a lot of the titles run better. I don't know, but for me, it seems to work better in my use case. So I tend to use this software here now. You're not gonna to wanna to go through Steam and actually purchase Virtual Desktop because they have a piece of software that is completely different than the streamer app. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go to vrdesktop.net and then right here, the download streamer app, you're gonna to wanna to download one of those. So you're either gonna download the Windows version or the Apple version. Once you download and install that, you're going to see this here. And this is the VR uh, or virtual desktop streamer software. So you can see you have the accounts, you have your options. Pretty much, I don't really touch any of these here. Uh, I just leave this completely alone. And then once I have this up and running, then I jump into the headset and actually purchase and download the software from within there. So let's jump in the headset and let's show you what that looks like. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to your store I already have virtual desktop up. Basically just here, just within the top of the search, just type in virtual desktop, it'll take you right to it. This is it here. Now again, this software at this point of viewing this video, I believe it's $19.99 for the software. You're gonna wanna then download that, install it. And then once it actually launches in, let's see. You're gonna be faced with this window here making sure you could see what I could see. You're gonna have your PC here. You're gonna have different environments. So we could do a theater. You can see I'm like in a oh, movie theater and got this on the screen here. Or we could do a, let's see, auditorium. Look at this. We're looking at this screen here. Or I could do a gaming room, which is pretty neat. It's actually one of the newer ones I've seen them do. Pretty neat setup here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to computer. I'm just gonna click on my computer. It's gonna connect and now it's connected. And I could launch Steam VR at this point in time, or I could go to Steam and then just launch Steam VR from within the software on my desktop. Okay, so you can see now we're inside of Steam VR. If I use my left controller here, hit the menu button there, you can see we do have our library available to us of PC VR titles that I have installed on here. We have Google Earth VR, Half-Life Alex, Phasmophobia, Boneworks. I have tons on here of titles I have collected over the years. A set of course of competizione, R Factor 2, we do have access to those in VR. You could access the store through here, download more VR titles. It is pretty cool. But one thing that's important to note, when you're in Steam VR, um, specifically through the virtual desktop streamer, if you hit your right menu button on your right controller, it brings up your Oculus Quest 2. Now, I'm not sure if you guys could see that. No, you don't see that. <laughs> but I could see the Oculus Quest 2 menu pop up, so I could actually quit virtual desktop here. I could actually adjust a lot of my quick menus here. Um, like I could then adjust my screen brightness and my, my speaker volume and everything like that, all within the right menu button. The left menu button brings up and down the Steam VR menu. Okay, so now that we exited Steam VR, very awesome PC that actually looks a lot 
like my build in a way. My build is uh, not as clean though, <laughs> but uh, so we're in, within virtual desktop. You still have access to your menu buttons. So the right button here is gonna again, bring up my Oculus Quest 2 menu where we could quit virtual desktop if we wanted to, or the left menu button. Now, instead of bringing the Steam VR menu up, it's gonna bring up the virtual desktop menu up. So again, this is where we're going to make adjustments if you need to. So from here, you're gonna go into settings. You can see environment quality. You could change that. You can change your frame rate. You have access to 120 Hertz if you want to. Uh, there's a few other things you, you have to change before you have access to it. You can see the desktop bit rate here, 55 megabits per second. There's a lot of settings you could adjust within here and you could see on this bottom edge here, your frame rate, video frame rate, CPU utilization, GPU utilization, and video bit rate. So that way you could kind of see in real time what's going on. If we want to go back to Steam VR, I just click this button here and it launches it automatically. Dynamic lighting, lots of things that you could actually adjust to actually help you uh, try to maintain as smooth of an experience as possible. Uh, you got your microphone pass through with noise cancellation. You could turn that on to, if you if you have a lot of noise in the background. Um, where is there is one setting here that I did want to bring up. Let's see. Let's go to streaming, ultra, VR frame rate. There we go. You have access to 120 there. There we go. Synchronous, spa uh, synchronous space warp or SSW causes the PC to automatically switch to half the frame rate under heavy load while the headset extrapolates the missing frames. So this is like the brain warp feature you've heard of some VR headsets doing. Uh, basically what it's doing is exactly what it said. It halves the frame rate. So if we're at 120 frame rates, it's going to half it to 60 and then it's going to fill in the in between frames with what it thinks would be there at that point in time. Downside to that is you may have some blurring. You may have a little bit of uh, artifacting here and there if it doesn't extrapolate that frame correctly, but it can make experiences that are very demanding, like a set of Corsa Competizione, very playable and very enjoyable because you're in a vehicle, your interior doesn't really move too much. The outside is not really swinging back and forth super fast. You are driving fast and sometimes through fast hairpins or uh, if you're going through a chicane, you may notice a little bit of blurring in the background for that moment, uh, but you're actually going to experience a more steady sort of uh, frame rate experience. So you definitely want to also make adjustments through here and you can see the VR graphics quality kind of gives you um, what it recommends for each type of graphics card and what you may experience. So we're on the Ultra because we have a 3090 and it recommends at least an RTX 3080 or an RX 6900 XT for that level there. You could also change a lot of your input bindings or anything like that. But a lot of the questions I get are, re are referencing clarity, referencing frame rate. And for those two types of methods of Connecting your Quest 2 to the PC, these are the tabs I would look at to fix your experience. All right, so everyone who just got their Oculus Quest 2, and if you're new to VR, I just wanna say welcome to the VR community. It is absolutely awesome. It's a heck of a lot of fun, and a lot of people that have the Oculus Quest 2 also have laptops and PCs that are more than capable of doing VR content, VR gameplay. So maybe if you haven't jumped into it, I highly suggest you try it out. It's an experience unlike any other. The Oculus Quest 2 is an amazing headset. And another amazing aspect to me is that I could play wirelessly my PC VR titles with anything, without anything tethered to me and experience that full fidelity, full rendered resolution of PC VR goodness. So everyone, if you have any additional questions, definitely let me know in the comment box below. Also check out a lot of my other VR reviews and content that I had on this channel over the years. There's a lot of VR headsets I've tried, but now there's a lot of VR headsets I have yet to try. A lot of the newer ones, a lot of the crazy ones that are out there. I hope to get reviews on those as well. But just keep this in mind. If you have the Oculus Quest 2, uh, don't you know feel too bad about not having 
the Valve Index or not having the HP Reverb G2. I've tried both of those headsets. I own the G2 and I absolutely love that headset. I adore the clarity, but I do gotta say out of all my headsets and I have many different headsets at my disposal here, uh, I use my Oculus Quest 2 the most. It's an absolute amazing piece of technology and I think uh, Meta did a great job with it. But everyone, welcome to the VR community. Again, if you have any additional questions, let me know below. I'll try my best to answer them all. And everyone, stay safe, stay happy, and I'll catch you all next time.